This training video overviews an NPT mount installation of the H5A IR PTZ camera. For the pendant wall mount option, see the installation guide on the Avigilon website. Note that the wall and NPT mount are sold separately. Important safety information is detailed in the installation guide. Ensure the package contains the camera, a T20, and a T10 star key, three RJ45 crimp on plugs, external power, an input output wiring harness, a sprayer mounting bracket, and installation screws. Next, ensure the NPT mount package contains the mount, a lock nut, and thread sealing tape. This procedure requires a 1.5 inch NPT female to female pipe adapter. It is recommended that the adapter be mounted to a 1.5 inch conduit pipe. To begin, pull the required cable through the conduit pipe. Next, apply the thread seal tape to the pipe and screw on the pipe adapter. Apply thread seal tape to the adapter, screw on the lock nut, and screw it into the pipe adapter. Next, install the camera to the NPT mount. Attach the safety lanyard from inside the mount to the anchor on the camera to prevent the camera from falling. Note that the camera does not support cables with boots and strain reliefs. Next, remove the sealing gland caps from the top of the camera. If there are external input or output devices that need to be connected to the camera, connect the device to the camera input-output connector cable. Use one of the following methods to connect power to the camera. If you are using either a 95 or 60 watt power over ethernet injector, connect an ethernet network cable to the injector. Or, if using a Cisco Universal PoE cable switch supporting 60 watts over four pairs, the Cisco switch must be configured with the Force 4 pair option enabled. Or, if using external power, connect an auxiliary power source that supports up to 75 watts or 105 volt ampere. Next, run the ethernet cable into the cable gland. Push the cable through the gland cap and then the hole in the cable gland. Note the orientation of the cable and cable gland. Next, crimp the connector onto the cable. Remove the I.O. cover and feed the I.O. connector cable through the gland cap, cable gland, and cover. Tighten the cable glands around the cables. Next, connect power and I.O. cables to the camera, then tighten the cover. Use a network cable to connect to an Ethernet port. If the RJ45 connector must be removed from the camera to check a network issue, gently pull the cable towards the locking tab to release the RJ45 plug before pulling upwards. The link LED indicator will turn on once a network connection has been established. Check that the connection status LED indicator indicates the correct state. Once a network connection has been established, push the PTZ camera into the NPT adapter. Be careful not to trap cables between the camera housing and the adapter. Once the camera housing is aligned to the adapter, turn the camera until it locks into place. Use the T20 star key to tighten the screws in the adapter. Make sure the adapter is secured, then tighten the lock nut to fix the camera to its final position. In the next segment, configuring the optional onboard storage is reviewed. It is recommended that the micro SD card have a capacity of 8 gigabytes or more and a write speed of class 6 or better. If the card does not meet the recommended capacity or write speed, it may lose frames or footage and affect overall performance. Insert a card into the camera. Do not force the card into the camera, or the card and camera may be damaged. Next, access the camera's web interface to enable the onboard storage feature. For specific information on the camera's web interface, consult the IP camera web interface user guide. The user guide can be accessed on the Avigilon website. In the next segment, the steps to initialize the camera's username and password are reviewed. Note that an example camera is used for illustration purposes. Initializing a camera username and password. After January 1st, 2020, Cameras manufactured do not have a default username or password and will be in a factory default state. You must create a user with administrator privileges before the camera is operational. 
Let's take a high-level look at these applications. Use one of the following methods to create the first user. In the camera's web interface, enter the camera's IP address in a web browser to access it. If the camera is in the factory default state, a new user page will direct you to create the first user. Or, if you're using the CCT application, cameras discovered in the factory default state will be identified as shown here. Select the Admin tab to create the first user. In a Vigilant Control Center client software, the client will ask you to create a new user. If you're connecting your Avigilon camera to a third-party VMS, you will need to set up the first user through the camera's web interface or camera configuration tool before connecting to the third-party VMS. In the next segment, assigning an IP address, accessing a live video stream, and aiming the camera are reviewed. Note that an example camera is used for illustration purposes. Assigning an IP address. A camera connected to a network automatically obtains an IP address. If the camera cannot obtain an IP address from a DHCP server, it will use zero configuration networking to choose an IP address. When set using zero conf, the IP address is in the following subnet. The IP address settings can be changed using one of the following methods. The camera's web browser interface using the camera's IP address, or a network video management application such as a Vigilon Control Center software. Lastly, you can assign the IP through the ARP ping method. We will have more information on this method in another lesson. Note that the camera does not have a default username or password and will be in a factory default state. You must create a user with administrator privileges before the camera is operational. To view live video streams, use the web browser interface or a video management software application such as ACC Client Software. Access the camera's web interface using a browser with the camera's IP address. In the next segment, setting the home preset position steps are reviewed. The camera supports self-learning video analytics from the home preset position. The home preset position is typically the field of view the camera returns to after being used for investigations. Before configuring the camera's home position, connect the camera to a site in the ACC client software. Display the live video from the PTZ camera. Name the present position Home so it will be easy to find when configuring the camera for other applications. To begin, move the camera's FOV into position. In the highlighted drop-down list, select a number, then click here. In the dialog box, enter a name for the preset. Check the highlighted checkbox if you want this to be the camera's home preset. After the camera's home preset position is set up, configure the required video analytics events in the ACC client software. To manually return to the home position, click here. Configure the camera to automatically return to the home preset position after the camera is left idle for a set amount of time. This can be configured in two ways, either through a PTZ tour or a rule. A PTZ tour can be configured from the camera web interface or in the ACC software. To return to the home position automatically, create a new tour and add only the home position to the preset list. Next, check the highlighted checkbox and use the field here to define the expected amount of idle time before the camera returns to the home position. To use the rule method, you must have an Enterprise Edition or Standard Edition version of the Avigilon Control Center software. If the camera no longer functions as expected, reset it to its factory default settings. Use the Firmware Revert button to reset the device. Ensure the camera is powered on. Using a straightened paper clip or similar tool, Gently press and hold the firmware revert button for two seconds. 
When resetting the device, do not apply excessive force. Inserting the tool too far may damage the camera. Finally, release the button after two seconds. Next, reinstall the cover. In the following segment, steps to clean the lens and IR window are reviewed. If the video image becomes blurry or smudged in areas, it may be because the lens or IR window requires cleaning. In the camera web interface or video management software, activate the washer and wiper feature. The washer and wiper are activated from the live view page. From the ACC software, the washer and wiper are activated through the PTZ auxiliary command. However, if the cleanliness of the camera window continues to affect the imaging quality, or if maintaining a model that does not have a wiper, manually clean the camera windows using the following steps. Use hand soap or a non-abrasive detergent to wash off dirt or fingerprints. Next, use a microfiber cloth or a non-abrasive fabric to dry the dome bubble. Failure to use the recommended cleaning materials may result in a damaged or scratched camera window. A damaged camera window may negatively impact image quality and cause unwanted IR light reflecting into the lens. To clean the camera body, use a dry or slightly damped cloth. Do not use strong or abrasive detergents. This completes the NPT mount installation steps of the H5A IR PTZ camera. For specific information on the camera, consult the H5A IR PTZ user guide. The user guide can be accessed on the Avigilon website.